Don't just sit there. Send an email to idea at wretched.org. This is Wretched Radio. Questions, comments, conundrums, snarks, and any stories, news articles, sermons, good, bad, otherwise, please don't just sit there. Send them to idea at wretched.org. Jimmy Jam. Yep, like this one from Anonymous, who uh, who's wondering if the vaccine, you know, the COVID one, is the mark of the beast. That is a question that I've seen bandied about on the internet. Let's let the Bible answer it for us, and I think we will have it resolved pretty quickly when we remember a key interpretive principle. Context. 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 What is the context of the mark of the beast? It is found in the book of Revelation. Stop right there. What's the context? We're, we're, we're getting this apocalyptic imagery from John to tell us about the end times. You've got yourself a millennial reign. Are we in that? No. Again, this, has the tribulation happened? No. So I'm not even sure in the timeline of eschatology at this point that we can even get the mark of the beast because we're not in this particular, I'm going to say it, dispensation Nevertheless, let's let the context of the exact chapter tell us what is going on here. This is Revelation 13, and we're going to be talking about the beast. This is stuff that's a little tricky. The beast from the sea, the beast from the earth. Remember, apocalyptic language. I saw another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Okay, is he, so is he, a, is he an actual dragon? Okay, can a dragon speak? No. I I think it's designed to be like scary language, powerfully spoken. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. All right, let's remember that. The context is this beast, whatever it is, is going to cause people to worship the first beast. So this is about worshiping something besides God whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even gives fire, makes fire rather, come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. All right, what is the context? You're going to worship the Antichrist, the beast, whichever character this is, You're going to be worshiping something but God. This is all about your idol. Who is it? God, the devil. Because he wants you to worship, the beast wants you to worship the darkness. Let's continue. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. This is about worship allegiance to God or to the devil. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. There's our verse. That no one may buy or sell except the one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, I understand why people would say you're, you, you could get a mark and it's not going to allow you to do commerce. And there's been talk, if you if you don't get the vaccine, You don't get the paper. You don't get the yellow band around your arm. You can't go into the market. You can't get a job. Now, if that does happen, I'm not saying it is. If that does happen, is that the mark of the beast? And I think the answer to that is absolutely not. Because it has nothing to do with your testimony. It has nothing to do with whom you worship. This context, this is purely theological this is, this is not being a part of a party or being disobedient to the government who's commanding you, potentially, to get a vaccination. The context of the mark is the people who don't accept it are like, no, I, I don't worship you. I will not bow down. I will not accept this. It has nothing to do with a vaccination. Context, context, context. Please note Did I just say you should get the vaccine? No. Did I say you shouldn't get the vaccine? No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying the vaccine or any other sort of marker that you think might be the mark of beast, unless it is put to you 
Will you deny, Will you worship the beast? Then you get the mark. If you don't, or, or I'm sorry, if, 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 if you refuse to worship the beast, you get the mark. If you worship the beast, you don't, and you just carry on. This is about God. This is about our beliefs. It's not about a vaccine. Please send your emails to idea at wretched.org. All right. This is a, this is a tricky one uh, from Toby. He says, uh, Todd, my pastor is an avid supporter of the BLM movement and CRT. He and his wife make proclamations of their views on their personal social media, though I've yet to hear it creep into the pulpit. Nevertheless, in trying to give him grace and try to see through these things as we pray for them, I'm torn as to whether I should write it out or go. There's other considerations to be made. Uh, mate, this is, this is all too common these days. In fact, if I just scrounge through my ever-growing pile of this and that, I believe it was in the Spectator was writing an article. This was in response. If you recall, I think it was early December. The six presidents of the Southern Baptist Seminaries wrote a CRT. It's, it's no, we don't accept it. We don't teach it. Even J.D. Greer then said, agreed, CRT, don't use it. Some conflicting information from J.D., but that was, that was the response to that particular statement. Nevertheless, there were some pastors who then said, well, we got to leave. We can't stay in the Southern Baptist Convention. We've got to go. Because if you don't embrace systemic racism and critical race theory, uh, then we, we just have no place here. And the spectator then wrote an article stating, uh-oh, is this going to be the end then of the Southern Baptist Convention? Now, I don't know who the particular writer was at the, at the spectator, but this is a big deal that is coming our way. Where is that article? Jimmy, did you mess with my files in here? I, I did. Thank you for taking that bullet for me. I tried to clean it up for you. So I, I think that we would do well. I wouldn't get consumed by this, but if this talk is happening in your church, get ready because I think that, I hate to say it, but unless this thing gets worked out somehow, and even if it does pretty amicably, there's going to be some collateral. There's going to be some people that are leaving. There's going to be some people dividing. It really depends on what his take on it is. It depends on how fervent he is being about it. It, it, it depends on what implications that it does have for the body. And I think that I would start out by asking him, lovingly, respectfully, as we're supposed to do with an elder, to talk to him like you would a father. Where are you at on this? Trying to understand it. I notice that you're writing about it on the internet, but you're not doing it in the pulpit. Do you plan on doing that in the pulpit? How big of an issue is this going to be for our church? How come? How do you see the thing? Hear the fellow out and then determine where is this bad boy going? And then you'll be able to make a decision based on this. I would like to suggest this, however, as a principle, before you go about the business of leaving quickly, just, just put the brakes on as much as you can. Very emotional issue that we're dealing with. And the implications are big. Because my opinion that somebody who's embracing CRT, even as a helpful interpretive principle, I, I don't think that person is going to veer to the right. They're, they're going to be going much more to the left, and it will get involved in the gospel, and it will get involved with how we evangelize, and it will get involved with what the cross is about. That's the only place that it really can go. So that's almost certain. But before it gets there, Try, try, try. If you're in a church where it's a good guy, he's been preaching faithfully, and he's, he's been caught up in the woke movement, to whatever degree, be loving, be patient, understand his motives, see if he studied the subject. What could you learn from each other together? And try to stay. Because I think that's, first of all, right. And second of all, if we just abandon ship quickly without knowing a whole lot, where they're coming from, what this thing is all about, what 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 their what their educational level is on the subject? I got to tell you, we're going to be constantly switching churches because once we're done with this current trendy subject, get ready, we're headed for another one, and when that one is done, there's going to be another one. Why? Because if anything 
what we are seeing inside of the church, I think it's going to have a longer lasting effect. It's still pragmatic. The, the, the church has always preached about the subject of racial issues when the text presents it, always. And yet, the, 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 the church really hasn't been as hot about it as we have been lately. Why? Why did it ignite so much? Why is it a firestorm today? And I believe the answer to that question is because culture is all excited about it. And so we are too. And so if the world is is into the, we we, got to do this because we've got to be relevant. How fast will this pragmatic trend trend? We hope not long, but I fear it's going to be a while. So as you work through it in your local church, Try to do it as patiently and lovingly as you can, and it might get to the point, and time will tell. This, this, this could be pretty big splitsville for evangelicalism. This is Wretched Radio. Bailiff, please have the witness put the right hand on the Bible and administer the oath. Oh, the Bible, which actually says our yea should be yea and our nay should be nay. Does the defense have any more witnesses? Yeah, two of them (laughs) in Revelation 11.